On this episode of Deer and Deer Hunting Properties, Jason and Brad discuss different ways to work with lenders when buying your dream property. Then later, we meet up with Jason in Missouri, chasing turkeys and scouting land for the upcoming deer season. Stay tuned, you're watching Deer and Deer Hunting Properties. Just because this property is a great bedding property doesn't mean you can't draw them in with a food plot of your own. So let's say we sold that piece of property. Okay, we sold our 40. What's the next thing, you know, as a progression? What should I be looking for? What do you, what do you think I could do? You know, that next parcel is probably going to be, you know, from 40 acres up to 100 acres, you know, maybe 80 acres. But it's not even just about the acreage. It's what that acreage has to offer, right? So now we're probably getting into the parcel that has ag land on it or the opportunity for food plots, stuff like that. The timber is gonna be a little higher dollar value. It's actually maybe worth something, right? More established, uh, aged, it's older. Um, so that's something we're looking for, but it's gonna have a little bit of uh, everything at that point. You might even find a building site or a very small building site at that point, but that's really that next step, you know? And, and from what I've seen, that's probably the most gradual, and a lot of people will stay there at that stop, and they'll be very happy with that parcel. Oh, yeah, 100 acres, e even in my neighborhood. Uh, a lot of neighbors don't have that much ground, and they pound the snot out of it, but they love their <laughs> ground, which is great. So I, I want to take it one step a little bit back. So we, we had that 40 acres. Now I want to get to 100. I don't have enough cash you know, to, to pay for the whole thing. Real estate, like when I go to the bank loan, well, give me the process. So, you know, and I tell all of our clients, hey, you know, go get a couple different opinions. Important to get a, a couple different opinions. I try to look for that financial institution that knows hunting, right? Or a lender that knows hunting, that they're a hunter, right? Because they're also going to go to bat for you. If you're maybe pushing the envelope on something uh, financially where, hey, I can make it. But the bank's like, well, tell me a little bit more about this property, right? Well, exactly why do you need this? So I first will always try to find somebody that has knowledge in our field. And number two, I try to look for the ones that maybe give us a little leeway on the down payment, right? A lot of times they're going to require 20 to 25% down, right? But some of these places will even allow 10% or 15%, something that kind of allows some extra cash in your pocket to maybe do some of those improvements. So I'll even try to talk to the lender and say, hey, I know what it's at now, but this is what it can be. And if I do that, here's the equity that's going to be involved, okay. right? And they they do love that. That's very important to them to see like, hey, this is just not a piece of land that's not going to be used yeah. and it's going to go down in value either, right? So, so if you can show them, but probably the most important thing is if you have land, if you can buy land that either a farmer will farm and pay you some money for the acreage, that shows some income, which will then offset that cost in a lender's eye and might allow you to afford a little bit nicer or CRP or some mm -hmm. type of uh, income producing on that property will up your budget in in the minds of a lender. Which makes sense. Yes. Uh, the, the more cash you have or coming in, the less payments you're going to make. Plus, it just increases the value down the road if you ever want to sell it, right? I mean, if you already got a CRP contract on that farm, you know what kind of funds you're going to get in. Or if you already have established long-term tenant farmer that's running it, you know what you're going to get. So it goes a long, long way. Absolutely. And some people forget about the timber value. A lot of times there's some mature timber on there that needs to be harvested. You can get uh, a quote on that and you can use that in some lending institutions will actually look at that when they're putting your whole package together for your loan. 
Up next, Noah Rucks braves the weather to get set up for turkey season. You're watching Deer and Deer Hunting Properties. Deer and Deer Hunting Properties is brought to you by the all-new Feed Hub by Moultrie Mobile. If you just bought a property or have property already and you're looking for a blind, here are some of the reasons Orion blinds stand out from the others. Welcome back to DDH Properties. Today we're going to be talking about the blind right behind me. It's a 6x6 Orion blind. If you can't tell, the weather here in Wisconsin's a little unpredictable. It was supposed to be a beautiful day. No snow till tomorrow. However, Wisconsin weather changes super fast. So we're going to go brave the weather here. It's just a couple of weeks before our turkey season starts for us and put out this blind. Hopefully we can get one. Getting ready for any hunting season for the average hunter may be limited to weekends or an hour here and there after work. Rain or shine, the work still needs to get done. Moving or setting up new blinds would definitely be on the to-do list. Keep in mind this Orion blind was placed on the other side of the farm, set up for last year's season. With the current weather situation and the benefit of Orion's modular panel design, Noah doesn't need to use any heavy machinery, potentially tearing up the terrain or getting stuck. Orion's modular design made transporting this 6x6 blind a breeze. With just a small trailer, ATV, and a few clicks, Noah had all 10 panels stacked up and strapped down, ready for the journey across his farm. In this setup, I elected not to go with the stairs or platform, but Orion has a variety of stairs and ladder configurations for your perfect hunting setup. Another feature of Orion blinds is the window configuration. You can actually order if you want all vertical windows. You can have all vertical windows for your bow hunters and crossbow hunters. Or if you're more of a gun person, you can have all horizontal and, be like me right now, I have vertical and horizontal windows. So I kind of like the verticals in the corner and I can still shoot all the horizontals if need be. With all the window configuration that Orion has to offer, you'll have a great opportunity to never miss that deer that steps out. Setup is just as easy as taking it apart. Orion's American-made, all-aluminum construction allows Noah to assemble it fast and not worry about rust setting in from the elements. With the roof going on last, this blind only took Noah five minutes to snap together. Wow, that camo pattern looks sharp. Great job, Noah. Now go get warmed up. If you would like to find out more about Orion hunting products, check them out at huntorion.com. We uh, chased a big tom this morning and just couldn't catch up with him. So, bring my buddy Jeff from Wisconsin. <laughs> Should uh, be fun. We're gonna we're gonna try to put the smackdown on one tonight. Hey guys, so one of the biggest reasons why I turkey hunt it's not for my love of turkey hunting as much as it is my love for deer hunting. Wow, that was exciting. I know all you guys out there are hunting multiple species. I know I do, right? Whether it's turkey, ducks and of course the almighty deer. Um, and there's some other things thrown in there, maybe bear or whatever it might be, but use that time, right? Use that time to better your property and add value to your property. Turkey hunting has made me a better deer hunter, bottom line. Deer and Deer Hunting Properties is brought to you by Spy Point Trail Cameras.
it is relaxing as can be to be back here down in Missouri. It feels so good to get a few days off of work, even though work really never goes away, right? It's just a phone call away. But to get down here, it's just a different world to me. And I am super excited to share with you guys. I think you're gonna love Missouri as much as I do. There is a bowl in one of these. I don't remember which one. So, we might wanna be careful. He's not very friendly either. Oh yeah, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna taste good though. That's right. Yeah. My bad. So, some of the reasons why I come down to turkey hunting we talked about before is obviously getting a game plan together for deer hunting. I'm gonna be here, right? Yep. And if they come from behind us, we're, we're fine. I, I mean, we're not gonna shoot them from behind us anyways. And that's really what this week is about is uh, we hunted three different properties and I tried to set up on areas that I, I knew there were turkeys, but also I wanted to explore what the deer movement was. What is some of the sign that I saw uh, that on the other side of the property that does it have the same sign here on that property? You know, maybe it's old rubs, maybe it's an old scrape, maybe it's a shed antler or something along those lines. So all three properties, we try to explore different areas, yet still try to put us in front of some turkeys, which I take that time to really explore parts of my properties that I normally don't explore during deer hunting. Because if you guys are like me, I have five, six, seven stands, maybe even eight stands that are my go-to stands during deer hunting, and it never fails. I always will hit those spots when I am deer hunting. So I uh, got a few good buddies down here that you're gonna see. Uh, Jeff from Wisconsin, uh, him and I, uh, do some fishing together and do some hunting together down here so so that'll be fun um, and then my buddy Dane who is from Mississippi how did I become friends with him became friends with him when I got here to Missouri character of a guy awesome person him and I share a lot of stuff back and forth so it helps us during hunting season and then my good buddy Kevin from Texas met him also down in Missouri he is really one of the the top reasons why I'm here I met him first his love and passion for Missouri became my love and passion for it. So him and I share a ton of things when it comes to deer hunting. Turkey hunting, I could learn a few things, but um, just the, the overall area and connections, we share those to help each other out in both of our leases. We basically set up a blind where we saw the two toms from scouting the night before. And uh, we hung out there and uh, we really didn't see anything. It was just uh, one of those things that uh, they're just birds weren't around. And I don't know if something happened beforehand or what the case was, but we did see some nice bucks, so that's nice. So I got some scouting in there. Um, and one of my favorite parts is a lot of these bucks I don't even see on camera. They, they don't even go in front of my cameras and I have cameras out, of course. Um, but there's one that was really wide already, so I'm really looking forward to him. I think I know which one he is because I chased him last year a bit, but um, I'm excited to see what his potential is. So got my scouting in, uh, so that part was good, but not for turkeys. Turkeys was, uh, uh, was a big zero. So day two, we actually started out the morning on the same property we ended the night before with, but just a different part of the property. I'm hoping they come around that corner, but they could. You can see a long ways down there, they might see it all the way up and be pissed that he's making love to their girlfriend. There's something right behind us. Same thing, uh, not a lot of action. Had a couple hens come out, um, saw a bunch more deer, which was exciting, of course, uh, and another one with really good growth potential. So saw that, um, kind of watched their pattern a little bit because they don't hunt that area that much. So that was good. We probably sat for, I don't know, a few hours and it was just nothing. I think we heard one gobble all morning and that was a long ways away, like a long ways away. So. 
Other than that, saw a bunch of cows, so we were excited to get out of there and get ready for our, our afternoon run and gun session. Coming up next, we finally get a chance at that elusive big gobbler. Stay tuned, you are watching Deer and Deer Hunting Properties. Deer and Deer Hunting Properties is brought to you by PH Outdoors. Deer and Deer Hunting Properties is brought to you by Orion Hunting Products, America's number one modular deer blind. There was one or two over here when we were uh, over there the first day. Then there was one over there and another one over here and then a bunch over there. So I don't know. At 802, they were straight across there in between those two humps. Yep. And they were walking right over there. Do you then, think it's the ones that went there though this morning? Yeah, guaranteed. I watched them. Yeah. So, but yeah. these other two or yeah. three yeah. must be in. They must be hanging out down there somewhere. Yeah. One well, the one, the one, the one's over there. Yeah, they piled up with them. So, all right. So I think let's drive up there. Yeah, we'll drive right up there, and, and I think we'll take a look at what's yep. best spot there. All right. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is go to that red gate, um, and they flew off. To, he thinks roots, but they were still on the ground and whatnot. Um, kind of where we saw them yesterday on our walk out for tacos. So we're gonna go set up exactly where we saw them yesterday. Hopefully they roosted maybe uh, 150 yards, 200 yards away. We'll get our decoys out and do some calling. and Hopefully we get them before breakfast because I'm hungry. We set up in the spot where we kind of knew where they were the night before. Nothing right away, then all of a sudden gobbles from every which direction. It was, it was, it's exciting, right? It's, it, I compare it to the grunts I hear during the rut and deer huntings. We're coming this way. Look at that coyote. There's three turkeys in there. Yeah, well, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. I want to shoot him in the face. He's screwed up around anyways. He's right there on that hill. I know. You're freaking kidding me. There you go. Seriously, I've never... Hmm? I've never been more pissed about coyotes. So... We had one heck of a morning. Probably some of the most excitement I've had turkey hunting in a long time. We uh, set up where we kind of left off with them last night. And uh, I had a coyote come in about 60 yards. We had him gobbling all morning in the trees. He came in and then his buddy came in about 20 yards away. I really wanted to pop one of them in the face, but nobody would let me. So after that, uh, the two the two toms came down, they flew down, and then a third joined them. They were strutting, put on a show for a long time. On every trip I take, I like to try to learn something new. And this trip I did, uh, that new lease that I got, that uh, extra 100 acres that I've never even touched, I learned more in this couple days of hunting it than I did all of last year. We were just days away from me and I got a full antlered buck running from something and I couldn't believe my eyes. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was awesome. It looks like a, a good two year old. Uh, it's going to be a nice deer in the future hopefully, but man, I, I never, I've never experienced that where they full antlered and haven't dropped by this time. It was, it was a pretty cool experience, one that will stick with me for a long time. And I think this is gonna maybe make it my most epic hunt 
uh, of my career, and I've had some great ones the last couple of years. So I'm really using this to dial in on some of the largest bucks I've ever shot is what my goal is. I'm definitely gonna try to get that 200 inch deer. That's my, my end goal. That's the elusive buck that I have not got yet. So I'm hoping with a lot of the stuff that I've seen the last few days and what I'm gonna see throughout this summer will help me hone in on some of the largest deer I've ever had an opportunity to harvest.